Hey guys, uh, Technique Tuesday. What we're going to look at today is um, a kind of a dynamic hip mobility as well as a bit of a hip stability and strength drill, mainly focusing on internal and external rotation uh, as well as obviously a couple of other challenges that we can incorporate um, focusing around posture and core as well. So the movement we're going to look at is basically a tall kneeling step up. Okay. So you can see all we've got is uh, some plates, okay, stacked on top of each other. You can use a step, a box, etc. Start off with something small to begin with to get used to the movement, and then you can start increasing the height, which we'll discuss in a minute. So for this one, we're going to adopt what's called the tall kneeling stance. Tall kneeling stance is simply both knees together, all right, with the hips open and good posture. So what I mean by good posture is once we're in the tall kneeling position. We're locking the hips down by squeezing the glutes and not allowing the ribs to flare out and overarch our lower back, okay? So you've got to really focus on bracing the core, keeping the rib cage pulled down to make sure that back is in, keeping its natural curve and not, uh, not an excessive uh, extension in the lower back. So from there, we're going to set up just in front of our plates or our, our, um, our step. And then all we're going to do is keeping that posture, we're going to bring the leg forward, stepping onto the plate, then from there, we're going to push through the plate, ideally trying to emphasize more from the front leg than the back, and come to standing. Then we're going to reverse the move, we're going to step back, nice and smooth and controlled, and then bring that front leg back to the start position, back to that tall kneeling stance. So like I said, what we're getting is as we bring the leg up, we're starting to challenge internal and external rotation through the hip, which is where a lot of people tend to lack mobility which then can implicate uh, poor positions in squats, but also then uh, cause a lack of stability around the pelvis and, and, and aid in that hip drop that we, uh, we see in runners. Also then from there, as we go into the step, we're gonna get a little bit of a, a stretch and mobility exercise on the back hip, and then obviously a little bit of stability as we go through into that step up. And all those demands are gonna be increased as we increase the height of the platform that we're gonna stand onto. So again, for using plates, it's a nice way just to slowly increment the height by adding an extra plate on top. Or if you've got adjustable benches, etc., they're a good way. Now, we don't need to be going super high for this. So realistically, you can see here, I'm not far off 90 degrees. My knee is just slightly higher than my hip. Okay, we're probably looking at to the point where maybe you've got almost sort of a 45 degree angle, okay, which is gonna really test the limit of your hip flexion. So you'll find that height based on your current hip flexion mobility, i.e. the ability for your knee to come into the chest and obviously start from a higher position to begin with. So that's one way we can increase the challenge is by increasing the height of the platform we stand onto. But remember, we need to make sure we keep that posture and that stability. So as we step, we're trying not to excessively lean over or rotate from one side to the other. So we're really relying on stabilizing that pelvis as we bring that leg through. That's the priority for this exercise, not the height. So own that first before you do any progressions. Equally then we must be able to demonstrate that strength and stability as we go into the step up. Remember looking at that knee, so we don't want that knee collapsing inwards as we push through that front leg into that step up. So again, the higher it is, the more likely that's to happen if you don't have the requisite glute strength. And then also we get a bit of coordination as well as we come to step back off the platform. And stepping backwards, we can't see where that back leg's going. So again, there's a little bit of coordination and balance in there as well. So it's a really good hip exercise to incorporate into your strength routines. Now, as I said, one way of progressing it is to increase the height. The other way is to add a bit more of a posture and core stability demand to the exercise and adding in that overhead reach. So we're starting from the same tall kneeling stance, but this time we're gonna add an overhead reach of so simply just bringing the arms overhead. Again, really focusing on that posture so we don't have that rib flare as we reach overhead. So again, if you're lacking good range of motion overhead, you may not be quite there for this, uh, this progression. So what, once you have got it though, like I said, arms straight overhead, roughly in line with the ears, lock the rib cage down so we're not extending, and then keep that, extend, uh, keep that posture as we then go into that position. And then again, think about reaching tall through the hands as we come to standing. Keeping that posture, especially on the return now, really pushing that back knee into the floor and not letting those hips drift forward throughout the whole movement. So stabilizing the pelvis whilst now engaging through here and keeping good posture, just like we need to do when we run. Obviously, as we're running, 
We're making sure we're stabilizing the pelvis as each leg goes to the ground equally, keeping the core engaged and obviously keeping that posture to allow us to stay nice and upright, which is good, efficient running technique. So have a go at that. Like I said, start off small, build it up to something that's challenging and you're looking for something like six to eight reps per leg, roughly a minute, minute and a half between sets and three or four sets for this exercise. If you've got some more sort of complex single leg exercises, this can be just a good warm up. So again, just a dynamic warm up for the hips in terms of mobility and stability. If you're relatively new to strength training, this could be one of your main single leg exercises in the beginning, just to build up some strength and confidence and integrating the core and like I said, posture into movement before going on to things like split squats, step ups and all that sort of good stuff.